Welcome to the Lifelong Learning Executive Education Series. I am your host, Andy Storch, and I'm excited to be joined today by Dean Jeffrey Garrett, who is the Dean of the USC Marshall School of Business. Dean Garrett, Jeff, welcome. Uh, it's great to be with you, Andy. Uh, I'm excited to have you on to talk about this idea of lifelong learning and uh, why it's so important in today's marketplace. And I'm curious, as Dean of the Marshall School, what do you see as some of the key challenges for business right now in the 21st century and beyond? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I think it's a fascinating time, Andy. Um, and I see just, I, I see two really big themes and, you know, we could drill down as much as you want. The first theme is, and we were just talking off camera about the fact that the, the pace of technological change seems to be accelerating, right? You can't get any more vertical than vertical, but it is feeling like the pace of change hasn't slowed down, it's speeding up. So I think what that means is that the opportunities in the business world are unlimited. So let's call that theme one. But then the, the same thing that's coexisting, I think, is the disruption side of technology where disruption, you know, if you're in the in the business world, disruption tends to be viewed as a positive. If you're a member of society, disruption can be really scary, threatening, and challenging. So I think what we're seeing at exactly the same time as technology is driving unlimited opportunity, it's also increasing business responsibility exponentially. You know, business is more accountable for more stuff to more people than ever before. Just think about something like the rise of ESG. I mean, you can't read a business story these days that doesn't talk about ESG. And I think the thing that a lot of people forget about that is they tend to focus on the E part, environment and sustainability. But if you think about it, you know, ESG is saying business is responsible for or needs to have, have some role in reducing social inequality. What are you doing for diversity, equity, and inclusion within your company? What's your carbon footprint, right? It's a really big responsibility set. Yeah, absolutely. And when you, you talk about ESG and like social responsibility, diversity, equity, inclusion, these are things that shareholders are asking for, stakeholders, you know, new employees coming into the workplace are asking about these things, which is influencing and really forcing many companies to make changes. And speaking of change, you mentioned the pace of change is accelerating. One of my favorite phrases that I use a lot when speaking at organizations is that uh, the pace of change today is faster than it has ever been before. And yet it's slower today than it's ever going to be. Things are not going back to the way they were before. They're not gonna slow down. They're just gonna keep getting faster, which means we've got to find ways to stay up on the latest trends to stay relevant, or you know, if we want to stay relevant in the workplace. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And you know, I have a um, I have a wise beyond her years daughter, uh, and my daughter is early in her working life, but she kind of has this yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody who's ever lived always thought they were in a time when the pace of change was faster than ever before. And I always respond to her, that's probably right, but this time it's actually true that right. the pace of change just keeps accelerating. Now, I, I did make the joke before that you can't get any more vertical than vertical, right. but we certainly don't, it doesn't feel like an S curve of change where things are slowing down, right? So what does that mean for you know, business schools or for people who want to succeed in the business world? I think there's a, you know, a, a very simple mapping from opportunity and responsibility to the skill sets that we need. And so on the one, one hand, on the opportunity side, I, I think um, you know, everybody needs to have what, I, what we might call something like technological fluency or technical fluency. Not everybody's got to be an engineer and a coder, but everybody's got to understand the possibilities that that creates. You know, I, I often like to say you don't have to be a geek but you've got to be able to talk to the geeks. You've got to be able to ask really good questions and use the answers you get to improve, improve the way you can run a business. So that's on the opportunity side. On the responsibility side, you know, I, I think very much about the way leadership is being changed today, uh, and it's just becoming more human centric. So for me there, you know, I think about, I, I read over the holidays, uh, a couple of recent biographies on Winston Churchill and Charles de Gaulle, two classic hero leaders who basically said to, you know, entire countries in times of crisis, trust me, I know the way I'll get us to a better future. 
I don't think we want hero leaders anymore. The, the world, the, the pace of change is too fast. The future is too unpredictable. We don't want heroes. You know, I used to think that we wanted humble leaders, and I think humility is in, incredibly important. But I actually think the, the, way to, the way we should be conceiving of leadership today is about human leadership, human-centric leadership. You know, you've got to be able to, dis, to be self-aware and self-reflective. You've got to be authentic. You've got to take EQ seriously. The, so opportunity, really understand the technology, responsibility, really think about human-centric leadership. Well, this is great because I was going to ask you next about what skills you think are critical for leaders in this coming decade where we are now. And I love that you brought up, uh, you know, being human, empathy, EQ, um, influence, you know, some of the things you talked about. I want to tie that back to something you mentioned earlier, which is disruption. And we're seeing um, first of all, we're seeing unprecedented growth for some of the biggest tech companies in the world, right? You look at Amazon, Apple, Google. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of disruption in the space companies that were around for a long time that are being disrupted, taken down um, by upstarts. And I think one of the big reasons is because they were lacking innovation, right? They didn't create a culture that allowed people to come up with new ideas and try new things. And I think that's really imperative for leaders today as well, is right to, to be able to create that culture and um, you know, foster and influence innovation. I know you guys are really big on that uh, at Marshall as well. Couldn't agree with you more. So I've mentioned two, two of what I, I think of as the three key skill sets that everybody needs and what we try to provide in business education. So one is being comfortable with technology. One is really getting human leadership. But the third one is something like uh, agility, adaptability, where you can't see around corners, but you've got to be, when, when you turn the corner, you've got to be ready to take on and take advantage of whatever you see. And, you know, if, if I think about how you develop those skills, you know, we design thinking, creativity, all of that stuff is really important. But, but I'm always struck by the fact that what our students tell us they want is real world learning, right? So you take some core set of theoretical principles that come from a discipline like economics or management or marketing, all the magic happens when you apply it in the real world to a real case. And I, and I underline the word, word real a lot because I think it, it should be real cases in real time, right? Because the world operates in real time. So, you know, should we call that experiential learning, action-based learning, project-based learning? I don't know what, but I think that idea, that core idea that Yes, there are some fundamental principles that really matter, but all of the action happens when you apply them in the real world. That, for me, that's the third principle of our, of our educational triangle. Yeah, which is huge. So what is the specific mission of the Marshall School of Business to address, you know, how does Marshall address these challenges and these skill needs for the modern workplace? I, I think this is a, it's a great time for business education because it's such an interesting time for business, right? And I'm a, you know, I'm a macro person outside in. I, I certainly think that our responsibility is to meet the needs of today and tomorrow by really understanding what's going on in the world. It's not too complicated to do the mapping from what, what the real, what's happening in the real world to what we should do in business education. So opportunity is basically about technology. You need to get the tech, you need to understand technology. Responsibility is basically about leadership. Let's have an updated leadership suite. And then the third point that you mentioned, the world is disruptive and uncertain. How do you equip people to deal with that? Uh, you know, one-two punch. Yeah, we have to think about creativity, design, thinking, and the like. But we also have to think about real-world application because that's where all the action is. So, I do think that it's imperative for business education to be keeping up with everything that's going on. You know, we were just talking before we started about the brave new world of digital assets, cryptocurrency, NFT, yeah. smart contracts, DeFi, all of that stuff. You know, we could say, hey, we, we, you know, it's going to take us 10 years to get some expertise on that. I don't think we can do that. I think our, I think our students, uh, the, our students are interested in these markets. Employers uh, want those skills. As you said, new companies are being created all the time. You know, I think in terms of how we do our education, it's going to decenter learning a bit 
faculty are going to have to be much more interactive and learn much more from students and from what's happening in the corporate world rather than being you know the, the classic sage on the stage who knows all and just dispenses knowledge it's going to be way more to it's going to be two-way or three-way going forward i think yeah what i love that you're doing is you know first of all yeah you and i were talking before we started recording um, both enthusiastic about this new web3 space blockchain, cryptocurrency, NFT, something I've really gotten into and I think is absolutely changing the world. Uh, there's an easy tendency for, I think, a lot of old school organizations or universities to you know, shy away and say, we'll wait to see what happens. We'll do a five-year study. Like you said, come out with a paper. You know, you're saying, realize we need to move a lot faster than that. And we're going to take a humble approach to not say or think that we know it all, but we can learn a lot from our students, our users, and get everybody involved and create a, a lab, if you will, or foster an environment where people can learn together and come up with new ideas so that we can all stay more relevant uh, as we enter these new times. The way I'm hoping we can do that at Marshall is to have a combination of true believers who are likely to be students, uh, entrepreneurs, people really trying to identify the next big thing and skeptics, professional skeptics, who are gonna be people who studied Chicago style economics, who are just gonna say, listen, this, this doesn't add up to me. I think the productive thing is gonna be the dialogue between those two gr groups, between the true believers and the skeptics. And so I, you know, I, I wanna be all in on studying the phenomenon, but I'm not all in on, oh, Bitcoin's the future, right? I mean, understanding the role of Bitcoin in the future, yes, so, I, you know, I, I think this concept of decentering, you know, democratizing knowledge, decentering, de decentering education is really p powerful. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, you, you use the word humility. I think that's so important. We, no one's got all the answers. And what we need to do is, real, is to be open to new things and to be willing to engage in the dialogue. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're recording right now when the, when the cryptocurrencies are all in free fall. What should we do about that? You know, the, some people are going to say, see, we told you we were right. And other people are going to say, boy, we saw the Bitcoin dip before four or five years ago, and it's going to yep. come back. Um, and, you know, as we were discussing, I think if, if we think about these new markets, digital assets, the big, the big proof that they're real is that the traditional crusty institutions, financial institutions are just getting increasingly involved um, because their because their clients, their customers want to be involved, and everybody, you know, everybody's saying, "Hey, you know, if we had, if I had art on my wall, and now I can have art on my computer, are you really going to tell me that the art on my computer is less valuable?" Uh, you know, the, 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 there's reason to put a giant question mark around that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's so many things going on, and I love that you're we're having this discussion. You know, proving that you are looking to stay relevant and help people. Uh, leaders out there stay relevant in the workplace. For people thinking about this idea of lifelong learning, continuous learning, something I'm really big on as well. And I think what we're discussing is proof that you know you can't get a college degree or a master's degree and just work in that field for 40 years and think that you're going to be totally fine because things are changing all the time. So we've got to be thinking about ways that we can invest in our continuous learning, our lifelong learning, that sort of thing. Um, this idea of executive education, you know, it sounds like, oh, maybe it's only for executives. I know that this is something that's more for everyone now. As you talk, you know, think about your mission. How does it relate to that? You know, who is this for and, and who should be thinking about, you know, going back to school, coming to Marshall or, or maybe somewhere else? So really important topic. And let me break it into two parts. Um, the first part is the relationship, you know, you're a Marshall alum, you did our MBA program, uh, and, I, and I hope it really helped launch your career. I think going forward, and maybe this has been true for a while, but absolutely today and into the future, degrees are foundational, but learning is lifelong, right? So mm. what does that mean for a business school? I think it means that we need to help help you and help others launch their careers. That's what our degrees do. But we also should be there for all of our alums and for everybody else throughout their careers, precisely because the world is changing so much, right? It, you know, how many jobs are you going to have? How many sectors are you going to work in? It, it's so different from 20 or 30 years ago when our responsibility in business schools was to launch you in a big brand company and what you were going to do is stay in that company for 30 years, right? The probability that 
any of our graduates do that is near zero today. So degrees are foundational, but learning is lifelong and we need to be there throughout the lifelong learning journey. So that's part one. Part two is, you know, in once you get into the non-degree world, it's actually a very buccaneering space because, you know, ed tech companies are everywhere. Boot camps are everywhere. You can watch every great TED talk. You can do LinkedIn learning. There's Coursera, right? There are all of these opportunities. What's the value add of an executive education program? So the first thing, I, I think you were right to say, it feels like a, a kind of an old term, an intimidating term. Uh, yeah. What's an executive? You know, it's an it's an old white man in a suit. We don't we don't. That's not how people should think about exec ed today. So I'll just shorten it to make it you know feel a little a little more contemporary. The way you should think about it is that our goal is to add more value to a learner than is possible by taking uh, passively a Coursera course, uh, you know, or something like that. So, so how do you how do you add more value? Um, I think you do it by emphasizing two things. One, it's a journey and a process. It's not just watching the lecture. It's we will help you try to understand who you are before you take the program help you improve who you are during the program, and then help you implement it in your job on the back end, right? So, so I think, the, I, I think the, the, the words that we're using, high performance and journey, high performance learning journey is a really good way to think about it. Again, because people have so many options. Yes, you can become smarter by, by watching a, a bunch of uh, videos on YouTube, no question about it. But the value add for us is really trying to understand who you are as a learner and helping you through, uh, through a learning journey. So, so it's not intimidating. You know, I'm wearing a suit, but I'm not wearing a tie. I'm also wearing a colored shirt today, right? Even, even for, for old white guys like me in suits, the world is changing. Yeah. Um, but, but our goal, and I think we can use technology to do this, is Yes, of course, we, you, we, we love talking with, I love talking with, we love uh, educating the C-suite on, on your know, big strategy decisions for companies. But I think we now understand that there's an entire pyramid of learners within all organizations um, who can all value from post-university education. And that's really the world that we're in. Speaking of this traditional model of business school, I, I think many people might think of business school as all about finance and management, but you've tossed around the words creativity and design thinking uh, and other terms like that. I wonder if you could comment on how that plays in or factors into the work you do and why creativity is important in modern leadership. Yeah, so so uh, again, I, you know, let me go on the one hand on the other hand here. Mm. It's really important for everybody in business, entrepreneurs to understand how finance really works. Yep. It's really important for people to understand management and org charts and all of that stuff. So the core disciplines aren't irrelevant. They're, they're absolutely foundational. But I think everybody today wants more because of the because of this disruptive dynamic world that we're living in. And so I think, you know, you know this because you benefited from it from a student as a student. But, you know, Marshall was the first major business school to have a serious entrepreneurship program 50 years ago. You know, that whole entrepreneurial mindset, I think, runs through the school pretty deeply. It's it's in the DNA of the school. And today it permeates everywhere. You know, so. If you were to ask me in terms of our faculty expertise, where's the design thinking, where's the creativity expertise? It's actually in our management department as much as anywhere else. And you might, you know, it, again, if we had a sort of back in the day version of business school, you'd say, boy, that's not, you know, what the management department is doing you is, is, is telling you how the org chart works. Yes, that's still there. It's still really important, but we're living in a world of flat organizations without, uh, with it, you know, there's not a lot of command and control. Most things are about creativity and about uh, coalition of the willing, you know, to move organizations. So, so even in the traditional disciplines, they're evolving a lot, but I do, you know, one thing that really attracted me to Marshall 
was the fact that it it has this entrepreneurial DNA. It's really a a place that focuses on what's next rather than uh, what is what just is. Yeah, I think that's that's absolutely critical that we we get the foundation right. We need to know how the finances work, um, but we need to be able to go beyond that and and get creative and be innovative, uh, as we talked about before. We, we've talked about the mission of Marshall. Marshall and uh, I believe in, a, in an address to this year's incoming class of students, you spoke to them about three core pillars. I wonder if you could share what those pillars are, or are those the pillars that we, we talked about earlier? People uh, joke about me that I always, you know, I always have three of everything, which is the kind of rule of public speaking, as you know. So yeah. I, could have, I could have different threes, but, but uh, let me go with the broadest one, which is what's the role of business school? And I think one is uh, we're in the in, in the knowledge creation and thought leadership business. Think about that as our faculty expertise. Second, we're in the education business, and our education has to be cutting edge. But the third side of the triangle for me is always to be connected to the real world. So you know, just having a two-way dialogue as we are now with the real world of business, I think, is just essential. Um, and and so so that's one triangle. Uh, faculty and research, teaching and education, real world engagement. The, the second triangle for me is, the, is back to the skills side, which is technical fluency, human leadership and agility adaptability and, and getting that through action-based learning. You know, I, I, I think both of those threes really matter. Yeah, those are so important. And I like that you really focus in on that real world experience so that, you know, we know that the work you're doing is in touch with what's going on in the real world. We talked about Web3 and blockchain, that sort of stuff. I know there's many other examples that it's not all philosophical. We, we are in tune with what's going on in the real world. And we want people to come out with relevant skills. The last thing I want to ask you about is, you know, we talked about uh, the importance of, you know, degrees are, you mentioned earlier, degrees are foundational. Learning is lifelong. So it's important for people to be engaging in learning um, I know a lot of people are not necessarily doing that. What, what mistakes do you see a lot of professionals making when it comes to education? Yeah, I, I, you know, the, the way I think about that, and I, I certainly would include myself in this, um, is that we all run the risk of focusing too much on what's happening right around us today, you know, to navigate how to get to tomorrow. And obviously that's all being turbocharged in the COVID environment with all the uncertainty. I think the challenge for everybody who, everybody, but certainly people who are leaders or managers or owners, whatever, whatever you are, is to be able to do that zoom in, zoom out. Of course, you've got to focus on the here and now because that's when things are happening. But you, you just need, I, I certainly for myself, I, I try to create some space for myself to zoom out and see the bigger picture. And I think if you, you know, if you look historically at the role of executive education, it's been a zoom out opportunity for senior executives in companies, you know, go to a university campus for a couple of weeks, become a student again. Today, as I said, I think that opportunity, because of technology, we can make available to people throughout organizations, not just the, the, the senior leadership. And, and so, you know, it, that, that's a, that's a self-improvement move, but it also improves your ability to do your job. If you can do your job in the moment and then get some perspective on it to see where your job fits in and how you can be better, how you can be better personally, but also how you can add more value to your organization. You know, I, I, I think that's the constant challenge that we all face. And that's why I do think, you know, it, it, it does sound like a bit of a cliche, but the notion that life, learning is lifelong, it's always been true, but it's never been truer than it is today. Take another look at business school. It, you know, it, it, it's not set and forget MBA. It's a, it's a lifelong journey, and we want to be there for people throughout that journey. Absolutely. Well, Dean Garrett, Jeff, thank you so much for spending time with me and with all of us and sharing some of your wisdom and insights and the work you're doing there at Marshall. I appreciate it and look forward to talking with you more soon. Me too, Andy. A lot of fun.